This is great. This is like, you know, a bit of formation flying. Are they auditioning the red arrows as well, are they? Uh, uh, it, it appears to be fuel for all of them. Now, the important fact is there that Frank Montagna was held up by uh, Sebastian Bourdais. The fueling on the nine was finished before the three on the eight, but he couldn't get out because there isn't the room to get a prototype. There's limited lockout in the situation, of, in the space they have in the garages. So they've actually uh, cost Frank at least two or three seconds. So a bit of an own goal, bringing them all in at the same time. And I don't think they need to come in at the same time, did they, they uh, Paul? Well, Frank Montani is a lap behind anyway. So uh, he, I would say he didn't need to come in. Uh, Frank Montani um, could have kind of pulled away. And it doesn't really matter if he does lose a bit, because as I say, he's not in that charge for, for the front. What I would say is, as Graham's just said to me, they went out 9 8 7 don't understand why they didn't just say to Bordier, just lift off as you go out and let him get the lap back and let him drive away. And you know, there's the other bullet in the gun for you in case it's needed. Wolfgang Ulrich having a look at the cars as they go through under his feet at uh, pit out. Quick comment about what Michael Waltrip said. Yeah, Graham Goodwin. I only just heard the end of it, actually, John. It was something I was hoping we were going to get a chance to talk to you about. I'm, I'm guessing that what Michael said was, you know... It's oh, we got the 73 Corvette. This is the fourth place car, third place car of Olivier Barretta. He's just gone out a couple of laps ago, and we've seen a Corvette in this position before. I think it was last year or the year before, straight on at Arnage, but he's just about to get it hauled up before, oh no, just tinged the tyres, but I don't think that's a massive problem for that car. But what he hasn't been able to do is find first gear and he's sitting, oh no, he's still got it in reverse. And this is very, very dangerous indeed. The car is still just rolling backwards towards the apex as the team car goes through. That was, a, was that the 50 car, the Labra car? The or was Labra that car was just retired, John. Right, okay, so that was his teammate. And so the 73 car, yeah, he just tinged the tyres. It's looked like he got offline a tiny bit. Just got offline and missed his turn in a tiny bit, as if he was maybe trying to stay out of the way of a prototype going up the inside. But he Possibly wasn't. So. Not he, curb, he wasn't, but, you know, as soon as he got <laughs> offline... This is your problem. Going back to what we were talking about. Yeah, I th I'm suspecting what what, uh, what Michael was actually saying. And I missed the first bit, taking a call, maybe talk about it later. Uh, but I I suspect what he's saying is just how tricky it is with these these uh, prototypes coming up from behind and picking up the point you were making earlier, John, where I think you were kind of really saying that was down to Rocky to find his way by. I sort of, I'm not sure about that one. He came from an awfully long way back and there was a lot of room and there was all the opportunity in the world to choose and that looked, uh, I think, far less than 50-50 to me. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced either way, to be honest. I can make a case for, for either of it. Paul, you have a theory about Peugeot before we go down to Lotus in the pit lane? Yeah, just very quickly, because um, the number eight card actually didn't need to come in at all. Um, he was only 10 laps into his stint. So what my theory is, is that Peugeot have taken a, a view on safety in numbers. Um, that by purely by having the three cars together and they've decided for whatever reason um, that they want to have the three cars running around the circuit together that um, that's going to help them a little bit. What was Paul time by the way? Did it we was, find that it out? It was uh, 3 minutes 25.738. Okay we've just had a 3.25.2 by Andrea Lotterer <laughs> so that's half a second quicker than, qu than qualifying. I should say, John, that, we're, that we're, while you were talking, I think, to Michael, what we'd seen already was Bordet actually matching the previous best yeah, time yeah. of the race to the 1,000th, yeah. 326, 298, but 325, 289 is extraordinary. Down to the pit lane, James Ross had a dreams of 325, 289. Grim, <laughs> Grim. <laughs> I should think James Ross had a dreams of a nice hot bath, actually, because he's been in this Lotus, he tells me, for four hours, pretty much. Yeah, it was uh, a very long stint, a bit unexpected.